Okay. Okay, so let's talk about question number six. Okay, and so this is like this trick shot that I tried to show you. So here's the whole idea when you get to, and this is going to be important, when you get to flat plane mirrors. If it's concave or convex mirrors or curved surfaces, you can't do this. So the whole idea starts with the idea that your angle of incidence is equal to your angle of reflection. Okay? So on this one, you're told that that total length is like 15, what is it about? 15 centimeters. 15 centimeters. The total length from here to here is 15. So you already know that you're starting down a distance of 5 centimeters. Okay? So what that means is that this distance from here, and I just called it x1 and x2, you can call it x and Y, you can call it A and B, red and blue, whatever you want to call it. But the whole idea is that these two distances here have to add up to 10 centimeters. And that's what we did wrong this morning. We said it equal to 15, and it should yeah. have just been 10. Because the entire distance is 15. So X1 plus X2, these two distances have to add up to 10 because you're starting 5 centimeters below the top wall. Okay. So then the whole idea works out to the geometry in the fact that this is, these two angles are the same. So if you look at this in terms of an like opposite over adjacent, which is going to be your tangent. So if you come over here and say, okay, this is going to be, it does make a difference what you call it. I call this one x2, I call that one x1. So x2 over 15 is going to equal x1 over 10 which is going to equal to the tangent of that angle, which is going to equal to the tangent of angle 2. And since the two angles are the same, and that's what allows us to set things equal. So you've got x1 plus x2 equals 10. So then if you solve this, it doesn't make any difference. If you so, Say you solve it for x1. Okay, so x1 becomes 10 minus x2, and then you can put that in here. Now you have one equation with one variable. Okay? And so that's the easiest way to work. Tell them I can break. Okay. So anyway, so your answer to number six should be around 10 centimeters in terms of that distance. Uh, now, we had asked, somebody had asked about number nine. So on number nine, here's your setup. This actually, in a weird way, ties in with Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. And you like, what does this have to do with the theory of relativity? It has to do with what's called gravitational lensing. So one of the main premises of Einstein's theory was that he said, if you have a large enough gravitational well, that it will bend light. So what Einstein predicted is that this was in the late 1910s, if I remember right, that we were, the, we were going to experience a full solar eclipse. Okay, the sun's going to be blotted out. And there was a star that was behind the sun, that were right beside its edge. And so Obviously, if the sun is shining like it normally is, you're not going to be able to see that particular star. Mm -hmm. But what Einstein said is that when that light comes past that past the sun, that light's going to get curved. So the light is emanating here, but in going straight, it becomes curved. Now, if you're here on the Earth looking at it, because that light is following a curved path, when it, that light gets to you, it's going to look like that star is actually over to the left a little bit. That's kind of amazing. Because that light gets curved. So what Einstein predicted was that he predicted how far that star is going to shift based upon this gravitational lensing because space and time is being warped. And so, but that was the challenge because like you, because, you know, when you have a solar eclipse, 
it isn't the same all the way around the world. So these the, the scientists had to travel to all these remote, weird parts of the world to see, to get in place for the solar eclipse. And then they had to get their equipment, and then this, is, this wasn't, oh, we'll just take a selfie. This was like the old style, you had to have like the big slides of film, and this was a whole process to get there. And so, but the beauty of it is, is that that shift matched exactly what Einstein said it was going to happen. That was kind of the big validation, and then he became like a rock star, literally became a rock star, like, you know, his name was all over the newspapers and things like that. So, here's the point. When you look at something and you see where it's coming from, that doesn't necessarily mean that that path is on a straight path. Okay, excuse me, that light is on a straight path. So when you look at what's happening on number nine, so here's the water, here's the sun, this light's coming in, and it's going to hit the water. Now, as soon as it hits the water, which direction is it going to get bent? Is it going to get bent more shallow, or is it going to get bent farther from the surface? No, no. So the light's coming in here, okay? From air into water. So here's your axle. When this hits, what's going to happen? The one on the right. Yeah. It's going to get, bottom's going to get slowed down and it's going to get bent yeah. closer to this way, right? So Wait, is, so is the normal the water? No, 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 no. That's like what's That's confusing the horizontal. me. Okay. The horizontal oh, no. is the water? Yes, the horizontal is the water. Okay. The normal <laughs> is this line. The normal is with the surface. Okay? So is that where it bends? Yes. Like on that? Yes, so it's going to hit this and this is going to bend. So it's going right. to bend more down this way. So here's the point. Wait, can you draw the angle too? Because so like, where, yeah, will the on. angle come from the, the middle? Yeah. Okay. So on this one, when you get a number nine, so an underwater dives, diver sees the sun 50 degrees above the horizontal. So what that means is if you're the diver, you're down here, it looks like the sun is 50 degrees above the horizon. So you're here, if you had, imagine you had a protractor, okay? And you're down here, it would look like the sun was 50 degrees above the horizon. Okay? So you're here. This is going to be this 50 degree angle. From his eyes. From his eyes. Okay? Okay. So what you're trying to figure out is basically what's going to happen if you're up here in the boat, what's the true angle if you're above the boat, what's that angle going to be? Which is going to be this angle right here. So when you look at this, you know, and here, when you look at this law, N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. That has to be measured from the normal, not from the horizontal. Okay? So when you're talking about the normal, that's what you're talking about is a line that's at right angles to the surface. So when you look at this diagram, so here's your air. That's going to be... One. So that's going to be one of your indexes of refraction. The second one is going to be N2, which is going to be water, which is going to be 1.33. Okay? Now, here's the deal. Since this is 50 degrees, what's going to be that angle right there? That's going to be 40 degrees. So you actually have to work off of that 40 degree angle. So what you're going to know is that you have N1, which is 1.00. Then you're going to have sine theta 1 is going to equal 1.33 times the sine of 40 degrees. So then you're going to, what you're going to find, and this is the tricky part about this, you're going to find this angle up here, okay? Geometrically, you're going to find this angle, but that's not the angle that you want. You want this angle over here. So you've got to do 
use that 40 degree angle, use that to find that angle up there. Then subtract that from 90 to get this angle over here. Oh, I'm going to be completely honest. I, uh... Okay. I think what's confusing me is like the normal and like where are we like measuring the angles from? The normal is this. This is going to be your line. So all of this. So those are all the angles. angles going to be the, the, the actual equation is only going to work off of this angle and this angle. Okay. Okay. These are the only two angles that you're that you're concerned with. But you're not given any of these angles. What your goal is that this is a 50 degree angle. But that's a right angle, so that means that's a 40 degree angle. So yeah, I get that. But so then up here, then you can use this to find this angle. Because that's the angle with the normal. Okay. But what it's asking for is this angle out here, because that's the true angle of that light as it hits the surface. If you're in the boat, if you're in the boat, you would measure this angle. You wouldn't measure the angle from 90 degrees. If you're in the boat, you would say, oh, it's so many degrees above the horizon. You're not going to say it's so many degrees down from here. But this is where the math works. The math works to get you this. But you're physically going to observe the, the angle with the horizontal. This makes no sense. So what we're looking for is that little angle underneath it? This is the angle that you're trying to find. Oh, and then that's just so 90 just minus the, that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do the equation. Well, that's, that's, just, that's a little confusing because, I mean, if you're in a boat, that's not going to be that flat. It's not, but, you know. it's not pleasure. What do you mean? It's like, like, it's like one or two degrees. Sunshine. No. Yes. Sunshine. Yeah. But also because that boat isn't in where the... Person is. The boat is directly above the person. So when do you want that higher one, not the lower one? What do you mean the higher or the lower one? There's two lines there. Yes, these two lines are parallel. Okay, that light coming. These two lines are parallel. But when this hits the water, it bends this way. Oh, they're parallel. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Okay, okay. I think I, I'm okay. Okay. Your answer to number 10 on that index of refraction should be between 1 and 2, closer to 1. Uh, anything else you want me to go over on the assignment? Pop, why do you have your phone out? What? Why do you have your phone? We have a lot of stuff. Number 6 was Lucho's cross. Thank you. Wait, so Wait, what's the answer to 9? Supposed to be close to 31. 31? Okay, cool. Would A, would we just say like? V toward. Would we just say parallel? Huh? Would we just say parallel? Yeah, that's fine. I say 0 degrees. Is that. I get that. Okay. And then can you can you talk about number 7? Good question. Yeah, that's with, with the picture? Yeah. It, okay. Yeah, because I understand that the mirror doesn't like work how it's supposed to, but where the guy is standing makes no sense to me. Okay, so this is the one with the, what's like behind the bar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Watch this. Watch this absolute dimension right here. Wow. Which one are we asking about? Question seven. Oh, I knew how to do that one. Yeah. Oh, I, I did not know how to do that one. Oh, well, I kind of did. <laughs> Who is he? That? 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 That's the guy. There's a guy? Yeah, with the hat. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was the background. No. I, that's the guy. The the mirror. I like his hat. I, didn't recognize. I thought that was just like the wall or something. No, that's, like the mirror. Mirror. No, that's the whole point. That's, that's the guy. That's, oh, that's why. My brain didn't register that that was a face. That's why it looks good. <laughs> Mm, okay, it looks like he's like <coughs> What'd you put for sit for? I said that the water yeah. so here's the, the point. angle at which the light travels. So if here's the, the, the mirror the other, yeah. and that light's going to bounce <laughs> off, <laughs> right? That <laughs> angle of incidence <laughs> has to equal the angle of reflection. And so this is why this won't work because if you look at where 
that view is, it's like it's too far spread apart. Yeah, it would be like the thing's curved, right? Yes. That'd be right. Okay. Yeah, I, I got that much, but is he standing right in front of her? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I, I said it was to the right because I didn't know what was there. Yeah. Because I don't know how to find I'm pushing forward, right. can I just say, like, the, yes. the water in the hole scatters the light everywhere? Yeah. Oh, it scatters the light? Yeah, that's the whole point. Wait, what? Is that, okay, so if you look on question number four, fundamentally, and this is what I, I was showing you all. I said that the angle all, through yes, water will decrease. It reflects at the same angle that it hit it at, right? So, here's the story. So, if I shine this light, why don't you see it until it bounces off the wall? It's not bouncing Because it... Yeah, because there's nothing for yeah. it to interact with in the air. So if here is the normal road and it has like kind of rough surfaces, that light comes in here and it gets scattered. Okay? If there's a pool of water and that light hits it, assuming that there's no movement in the water, what's that light going to do? It's going to hit and it's going to bounce off. Okay? Like so since that light, light never gets sent back to you, there's nothing to reflect light. You don't see it. Yes. Oh, there's nothing for it to reflect back to you? Got that one right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because the light just hits the water and just keeps going. It's just like a stone skipping off water. How does, um, how does it work whenever you look at like really hot tarmac and then it like reflects? How does that work? That, it's an optical illusion. Basically, the, the, the air right above that surface is so hot and less dense that it, it acts almost like it, that index of refraction there, because that air is so much less dense, than it, then you have a different index of refraction than you have for the cooler air that's above it. And that's why it looks so different. That's, how you, that's why you can get like a mirage, because of that difference. Is it almost the, like the, the, the tube in the oil kind of thing? Very similar. Okay. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Going once? Twice. Going twice? So, Pop, I did that last 17 one assignment. So, today we're going to start lenses and mirrors. So, we'll start this today. Like I said, there's no homework. All right? So, a large portion of this is getting the terminology right. That's going to be the biggest thing because you got to talk about object distances and image distances and focal length and when are they positive and when are they negative and all this stuff, okay? So we're going to spend today, I'm going to finish this up on Monday, going through some different things, okay? So what I'm going to do first so you can get an idea of what's going to happen. So this is a mirror and it has a slight curve to it like this, okay? So we're gonna hand these around, and first off, we gotta get used to the terminology. So on this mirror, there's two sides. The side that's curved is what we're gonna call the concave side. The side over, this side over here is gonna be the convex side. Now, here's the easiest way to remember this, okay? You walk into a cave. So the concave side is, imagine this is the cave and you're gonna walk into it, okay? So whether it's a lens or whether it's a mirror, the concave side is gonna be the curved side like this. So that's how everybody, remembers. it's the standard way to remember this, okay? The concave mirror or the concave lens, the concave side is the curved side, it looks like a cave and you're gonna walk into it. That's the concave side. So, when you talk about the different things that you can measure, you're going to talk about SI and you're going to talk about SO. SO is what we call the image distance. And SO is what we call, oddly enough, the object distance. Okay? So, the object distance is basically how far away are you from either the mirror or the lens. That's pretty straightforward. That won't give you any trouble. The image distance is what gets a little bit squirrely. 
especially when you're dealing with news. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this around, okay? The other thing that you'll see is that sometimes images are upright, and sometimes they're inverted, and sometimes we'll talk about real images, and sometimes we'll talk about, like, what we call a virtual image. So if it's a real image, that means you can project it onto the screen. If it's a virtual image, you can see it, but it isn't something that you can project onto a screen. So what I want you to do first, okay, I'm going to hand this out. So you're going to have two sides to this mirror. So one side, I want you to hold up, and on both of these, just hold it up, and then I want you to move it away, and then I want you to observe what you see. Then do the same thing with the other side. Flip it over, give it a look, okay, see what you can see, move it away, and then see what happens, all right? So we're we'll passing these around. Stop that camera. Literally, just take some time. Okay. So when you when you're looking is this in going? a mirror, it's, it's, it's. it's like smudging. Yeah. I can see the smudge though. Like on the mirror, you can see the smudge. Okay, focus. <laughs> Okay. Can I eat the end of that? Yeah, I don't care. Ew. No, I don't All right. That would kill me. Oh, somebody have a worm we can put in there? Oh. A what? A worm? Oh, no worms, man. No, we have lettuce. No lettuce. Not, oh. lettuce. What's the lettuce? Not the lettuce. No, one, one, uh... Yeah, one little piece of lettuce. Would you spare us a lettuce? Would you spare yeah. you A singular lettuce. Uh, I, I think that might be too big. No, that's too big. That's kind of weird, though. It's wonky. Here, okay, wait, so it. why can't I'll they see it. it here? Can they? Just <laughs> <laughs> the lettuce. Turn smaller it piece, smaller piece. I have a cheese stick. Good for you, Sam. You should have tore it the other way. Yeah, it needed to go like halves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me see the cheese stick, Sam. Wow! <laughs> let me see the cheese stick. I have an air pod. Well, I'll do the cheese Pleasure stick. doing business with you. Yeah, do Sam. an air pod. Oh, that'll be good. That's Whoa! Oh my God. Wait. Oh, that's sick. I think she can tell <laughs> on here. Can you see it on there? Kind of. Yeah, I guess you can. No, you can Let's see it good see. from See that here. virtual image yeah. yeah, yeah, you, you can, can see it really good. good. Yeah. From above it. Oh, I can't. Yeah, it all looks the same. Did you just take my around. cheese stick to take my cheese stick? Wow. Yeah, okay. Probably. That doesn't work. What? Whoa. I'm going to need my cheese stick back. Oh, which cheese stick? Right. Oh, Louie, man, man, don't do him a solid on the cheese stick, man. That's that's I'm not going to do him a solid. I'm going to keep it. So, I'll give you a piece of lettuce in exchange. Okay, that's, that's just wrong. Yeah, How do you mean? Okay. Anyway, so back to our story. Back to our story. So when you're talking about magnification, so your magnification. No. All right. Sorry. Louis, you lost it. You can see it a little. So when you talk about magnification, if if the image. Is the same size as the object, magnification is just one. If you look at an object and it looks bigger, the magnification might be two, three, four. So if your magnification is like two, it means the, what you're looking at, the image, appears twice as big as the actual object. If it's less than that, like for example, it might be like 0.5. That means it looks like half, what you're seeing looks half the size of the actual object. So there's a whole bunch of things that you can talk about. You can talk about magnification. You can talk about is it inverted or upright. You can talk about is it virtual or is it real. And it all boils down to what does the, what does the mirror or what does the lens do? Does it bring it together? Does it make it diverge? Where are you looking at? So when you take the mirror and you hold the concave side to you, okay, when it's the concave side, when you're up close, you get, and you look, I think Louis said, it's like, man, I look really big. Okay, so this is like a cosmetic mirror. Okay? Oh, yeah. So on a cosmetic mirror, <laughs> you look at this and it's like, wow, I've got huge pores. Okay? So if you're up close in this, then you look really big and you look upright. But if you move it further away, you'll reach a point where it gets all blurry. Okay? Like you can't see an image at all. 
But if you take it far enough out, then you get an image again. But then what's happening is if you look at yourself, you're actually upside down. Okay? And so things have become flipped over. So when it's a concave mirror and you're looking at the side like this, you're, there's two options. If you're up close, you get an image that's upright and big. If you move it further out, you get an image that's inverted and small. Okay? So concave mirrors are, only cap are the only ones capable of doing both, depending upon where you are. But if it's the convex side and you're looking at the, the side that's away from you, no matter where you are, you're always going to have an upright image. Okay, it will never flip over, no matter where you are. So the other thing that happens is that if I look at this, if I look at Morello, if I look at the camera, okay, I look smaller than what I actually am. So on your passenger side mirrors on your car, it'll probably have a little thing that says objects in mirrors are closer than they appear because that mirror is a convex mirror. So when you're looking at it, you're gonna, if I look at Morella, okay, she's gonna look <laughs> a long way away, okay? Because, she, because she's so small in this mirror, if all, I see, if all I see was this image of Morella, okay, if that's all I see, I would think, wow, she's a long way away because she's so small. But now if I just turn and look at it, it's like, oh, right. <laughs> she's actually oh. really close. That reminds me mm. when you have a so the car, right? That's like, why the they have that warning on <laughs> like, your side of the mirror. It realize. says objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. So if you see <laughs> that and you see, oh, there's, there's a car and it's really, really small, you think that car is a long way away. It only looks that way because of the type of mirror that they have. The other thing on your mirrors, on your passenger side, you're not going to use the concave side because you don't want to have that image flip over. You don't want to be driving along and one side you look at it, oh, the car is right side up. You look at next moment and it's gotten a little bit closer, oh, the car has flipped back over. It's like, okay, well, that's kind of weird. So this is another reason why on the mirrors on your car, they only show the convex side of that that way, you don't have to worry about that image flipping over. Got that? V What's an example of like a real image? I'll show you. Let's go back. Wow, well, I feel like I'm like. <laughs> so. Stunts. Mm -hmm. So okay. this is a convex lens. Okay. Mm. So if you were to look at this lens on the side it would be bowed out like this, okay? It's a convex lens. So Vitor said, hey, what does a real image look like? So what I've got here is that I've got, this is the source of the image. So it's just project, projecting a four. So I've got, so this distance here is what you would refer to as your object distance. So this is how far you are from the source to the lens or the mirror. So this would be my object distance. Now, over here, this is this screen, and you notice that as I change the position of the screen, I bring it into focus, and then if I go too far, it gets out of focus again. So when you talk about the image distance, what you're talking about is the distance to where that comes into focus, okay, where you get a clear image. So if I'm, if I'm too far away, it gets fuzzy. Can you see it in the back? If I'm on the inside, it gets fuzzy. So there's a sweet spot where that lens produces an image that's in focus. Now, Wait, isn't this like a telescope? You're kind of. Uh. So the third thing that you talk about is the focal length. Now, here's, the most, here's what everybody screws up. The focal length, oddly enough, is not where the object is in focus, okay? The focal length is dependent upon the structure of the lens itself 
and how much it refracts. So this is a 10 centimeter double convex. So what this tells me, that's the focal length of this lens. So the focal length is based upon the structure of the mirror, it's, it's based upon the structure of the lens. Your focal length is not where the object is in focus. Okay, so get that out of your minds right now. Where the, so if you were to measure this, if I were to come in here, and this is what you all are gonna do in a lab. This is what you could measure. There's some things you could measure. You could come in here and you could measure, if you look, this is like a, a projected four. So there's a four in there. So I could measure the height of that four that's there. Oh, that would be my object height. That would be this. Then I could come out here and I could measure my image height. So I can measure the size of that. I can compare this to that. If this is bigger than that, my magnification is bigger than one. If that's smaller than that four, my magnification is less than one. I can measure this distance, which would be my object distance. I can measure this distance, which would be my image distance. So this is an example of a real image because I can project it onto this screen, okay? So I got a double convex lens, which means this lens is coming out here like this. I can measure my image, I can measure my object, I can measure, and then the focal length, you would have to be told based upon the structure of the lens itself. So the point being, now if I change this system, like if I move, if I increase, like for example, this object distance, then I can still bring it into focus. But now, notice if this one, now when I bring it into focus, oh. that four is really, really small. But mm -hmm. if I push this back, oh, now when I bring it into focus, then I get, that might be too close. That's like the same. Then I got a bigger four. Okay? That's not big. Now, it is isn't that, trust me. Now, here's the question. Is that four upright or inverted? It's inverted. So that's the other thing. So right now, I've described this as being an inverted image that's real because I can project it onto the screen. Got that? Yeah. Okay. Now, watch out. Move over here. Oh dear. Move around. Move around. I have another one. How much does this cost? What? The whole setup? Yeah. Probably about two for the whole thing, about 150 bucks. Oh, okay. Can we hold it? Or do we just steal? So, so this is a mirror. Okay. Now, if I hopefully if I gave you this mirror and said, how could you tell if it's a concave or a convex mirror, what could you do? Hold it up. Hold it up. Hold it up. Let me know what you find out. It's concave. Why? Because it flipped. Okay, it flipped. If this had been a convex yeah. mirror, it wouldn't have flipped. So what I'm going to do is, I, so I'm going to take this and put this out here at about 95. And I'm going to give this a spin. Now, what's going to happen here, uh, this is a little bit harder to see. So what's happening is that those photons are streaming th through from this four, going hitting this mirror. It's bouncing off that mirror, and then we're forming an image right here on this screen. Okay, so that's the path going from here to here. So when you're talking about in this situation, the distance from here to here. Is that my image distance or my object distance? Object. That's my object distance because it's from where the source is until where it hits the mirror. Then the distance from here to here is going to be my image distance. Now, in this situation, I can project it onto a screen. So is it real or is it virtual? Real. It's a real image because I can project it onto a screen. Now, 
if you, this is a really big four that is projected. Notice this four over here. What do you, is that magnification going to be bigger or smaller than one? Smaller. Because it's an object that looks smaller than what this is, okay? So if I change these dimensions, okay, I can change, and what you'll see is that it works out to ratio. Now, as I bring it closer, what do you notice is happening to the size of it's it's getting bigger? Okay. So as this situation, as I decrease the object distance, what happens to the size of the image? Increases. It increases, right? It's an inverse relationship. But again, now if I tilt this, obviously if I tilt this over here, I lose it. But if I tilt it here, and this is why this has to be able to tilt, so that I can come in here, hit that, it bounces off, and then it comes over here to that screen. Got that one? Yes. Okay, now here's the hardest one to see. Uh, can we borrow your laser pointer? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Now, this one, I can't show you, okay? I can't show you. So what's going to happen is that you have to stand over the back of this. And this is the classic example of... Sorry. Why are you looking at me? He has the camera. So this is the classic example of a virtual image. So, and I can't describe it to you, but, you, but you'll see it when you see it. So stand up here. And what you'll be able to see is a small floating four that appears to hover about right where my finger is. Okay? You're going to stand back here, okay? And you kind of have to look over the top, and you'll see like a floating four about right there. All right, let's go one at a time. Yeah, you kind of have to get down where you can see it. Oh, you, don't see it. you see it? That's way cleaner than I thought it was going to be. Oh, okay. So what you'll see... This is true. Wait, so how do glasses work? Basically, like this? glasses. <laughs> do you see you know? it? Yeah. So you, you'll see it right about in here. You oh. see a, I mean, I guess that's cool. Oh, there's no way you can see it. You can see the whole thing. You'll see it. You can see the whole thing. In this mirror, you can see. Oh, that. yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Let me see. Sorry. What are we looking Sorry. for? You're going to see a tiny floating four about right there. Just kidding. That was the most. Oh, I see it. Ever Whatever. I see it. What? I see it. I can't lie. It's like right there. Yeah, it's right there. No. See a lot? Camera. He, he, see he thought it was cool. I see You're the like, four. Oh, well, that's it. That's cool. I can see it from here. It's right there. Wait, wait, oh, Bruce that balloon. I see it. No, the damage is done. Okay? He sees, we it. he sees it. No. Wow, that That's disappointing. That's Pity your husband. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Boom. Well, oh he, he seemed personally attacked, and he went yeah. for the. He, he went, went for the kill. He went yeah. for the kill. Yeah. He was like, "I'm not having that." Are you looking? Like, at wow. That was harsh. It's a small floating four. You see the four corner? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I wish it was bigger than four. Yeah. Yeah. This is a big flashlight. Okay. Everybody got that one? Yeah. No, okay. See that. Now, over here. Start. Wait, so is that a, is that a oh, that is virtual image? Yes, yes. that's All a right. class, that's a quintessential virtual image. Ooh. Got the new is this camera. Like new cameraman in town. Oh wow. I wanna try it try and get it though. Okay, that's a real Okay. Question. No way. So, what I've got here, right. so who's ever doing the camera has to stay focused on here. All right. So, what this oh. is, so even though light travels as, as waves, you when you do optics, you treat it as like a beam of particles, okay? As a series of rays. Yeah. Oh. Knock back. Knock oh. back. back. Okay. So, we're going to look at. Concave lens, convex lens, concave mirror, convex mirror. So, right away, this is going to be lens. Is it concave or convex? Concave. Concave, why? It curves in. Curves in. So, if you look at what happens when I put this here, 
you'll notice that these beams are coming in straight, but what this does is that it makes them diverge. So one of the things that you've got to be able to figure out, does the lens or the mirror make the rays converge or does it or diverge or does it make them converge? So any time, and this will make sense later on mathematically, any time the rays are brought closer together, you have to talk about the sign of your focal length. If the rays are brought closer together, that's a positive focal length. It doesn't make any difference whether it's a mirror or a lens. If the light diverges like this does, as that light comes through and it diverges, then that's a negative focal length. And here's how you can remember it in terms of human beings. So if someone has, is a very positive personality, they tend to bring people together, okay? If someone is a negative personality, you tend to make people diverge away from them. So that's the easiest way to remember it. So in this situation, this light comes in parallel like this. What's it have to do with positive and negative? It has the to do focal with, length. with the, 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 the mathematical, how you're going to handle the focal length. Okay. So I don't For, know what you're talking about right now, yeah, but you don't. I should remember it later. Yeah. Oh. Detour, you're getting on his nerves right now. Your ADHD is going crazy. Detour. Hold on, let me get a close up. Okay. okay. This now, is audience. so this focal length, mathematically, we would treat as a negative value because it's diverging that light. Now, in contrast to that, converge. Oh. It's a positive person. Yes. So oh, this. Oh. Notice these beams like are being brought together, Not okay? Like so this, because light's being brought together, it's converging. It's a positive value. So convex lenses bring light together. It's a positive value on the focal length. If it's a concave lens, light scatters it out, We'd have a neg negative focal length. Got that? Yeah. Okay. Now, mirrors. Oh my God. Now, with this one. Oh yeah, they're So, the, now, is this a concave or a convex mirror? Convex. 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 Now, here's the story. This is the opposite. This convex mirror. Notice that it spreads the light out. So. On a convex mirror, convex mirror, it scatters the light. So would the focal length be a positive or negative value? Negative. Positive. Negative. Negative, because negative. Negative. it's going to divert, yeah. it's going to force positive. it away, right? So yeah. convex mirrors scatter light. But convex other things bring, bring it together. together. Yes. What's the other thing? Hold on, hold on. Lenses. 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 Okay. Lenses. So... Now, if I take a concave mirror, okay, and bring it together. Notice that that. Wait. Oh, we got Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Notice that brings the light together. Together. So a concave mirror brings the light together. So the focal length would be a positive, positive value. So here's the story. So you have. A con cave mirror brings light together. But if I have a concave lens, it diverges it. If I have a convex lens, it brings the light together. But if I have a convex mirror, it scatters it. So they're opposites. What if you have two? Like a, a lens and a mirror. Well, you can do that, but it gets weird. So if I do this, that brings it together. That brings it together. And then you so do then the if I do that, something. yeah, then it would just bounce that back off. Now, it'll bring it back together. Or would it bring it back together? Well, in a or you could do oh. this where you bring it together. Oh, oh my gosh! And then that would like basically straighten. Oh, it back that would just out. straighten it back out. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Now, somebody asked about how a human eye works. Who asked, Who asked that? that? I don't remember anyone asking that. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I don't know. Yes, how well, I asked if, if it was an eye. An eyeball. Okay, now. Face. 
Here's the eye, and we'll get more into this. A flashlight? So this is basically a very crude version of the human eye. So you have a lens like this. It is a concave or convex? Concave. Convex. Convex, convex. convex lens. Convex. So what it's doing is that it's bringing the light together, okay? And actually what happens is, this, is, this doesn't show it, but what's going to happen is if you trace this out far enough, these rays actually cross each other over and the image is inverted. So what, what you see of me right now, you're actually seeing me upside down because this is what your, the lens on your eye is doing. Wow. Is that everything that you've ever seen in terms of how it hits your optic nerve is upside down. But your brain says, that doesn't work. Let's flip it back over. Uh, so what glasses do is that your eyeball isn't focusing that image on your, the back of your eye, basically. So what glasses do is that it comes along and you can, like, tweak. That's a mirror. What so you can do that to tweak. So notice how I do that. Notice how these lines are like this. Yeah. But if I put that there, it changes that location a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what lenses do is they change the location of where that image is formed on your eyeball by, by working with that. So what's happening is that this is why you study index of refractions. So though that light is hitting here. It's hitting into a more optically dense medium, and then it's either being bent forward or it's being bent away, depending upon this. Now, you can also get into degrees. So notice that these are both convex lenses, but one has a much, much more of an extreme curvature. This one's very subtle. And this is what happens when you have different prescriptions of lenses is that how much index of refraction is there to change that light? Hold on. Different, different what of lenses? Okay. I missed that. Indexes? Indexes? Oh, okay. Different indexes. Some people have really, 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 really thick glasses. Like Harry's mm -hmm. water glasses. Yeah, because of the fact that they have to really, really, the, and really, really bend that light. Some people, if your eyesight isn't too bad, just needs tweaked a little bit, you don't need to bend that light too much. So, why don't sunglasses tweak your? Because aren't they also kind of? I mean, because I guess I, mean, I was looking at these. Because aren't these like also bent? Why don't they? They're not bent enough to make any difference. Yeah. Now, now, like I have prescription sunglasses. Oh. So those are bent, bent just like my normal glasses are, but they're just sunglasses. Oh, okay. That's the hmm. difference. Okay. okay. Got it. Good. Grand. Go. Back to the <laughs> Where'd my mirror go? Louie, you hit that chimney oh, for a couple more time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you got the camera. <laughs> Selfie Tom. Selfie Tom. Oh. Yes, sir, Louie. Yes, sir. Oh, it feels really dark in here. All right. Camera's coming back. Yeah. It feels like we're actually in a room without windows. There you go. <laughs> what? Now. Actually, I have 20, I have, I have 20, 20 vision, see personally. an extreme, now, now that you all know what's happening, mm -hmm. when you look at this, what type of mirror is it? Um, concave. It is a concave. Concave, right? Yeah. So with this one, <laughs> you bring this in. I don't know if you guys can see that, right? Yeah, I can see and it'll get real, real big, real, real weird. But then if you take it out. <laughs> that's, that's a selfie and a half. That is a selfie and a half. So you do this. <laughs> oh, look at those wow. Take it out. And it flips back over. So. Uh, welcome to the vlog. Yeah. There you go. Okay. All right. So. Is everybody trying it? Okay, pause. This is going to form the basis of everything. So we're going to work through a okay. couple of classic examples. So the first one we're going to do 
is this converging lens. Okay? So this is going to be like the classic example. Louis. Sorry, can you like, so the, the axles in snow does not apply to this, right? Oh, it absolutely does. That's that snow. makes no That's sense. Snow. So what? It absolutely does. And Louis, I'll show you why in just a second. Okay. okay? The axles in snow and index of refraction. Oh dear. Okay. Axles. Axles, like tires and stuff. Like uh, okay, so uh, we're going to start. Let me kind of get used to the terminology. This is a line. Are they cashews? Mm -hmm. cashews? Is that a mushroom? Cashews? It's no, a mushroom it's a, an arrow. It's got like little dots on it. That's a trip. That's so weird. What? Yeah, it's so weird. I don't like that at all. Okay. It's like golden raisins, you're weird. So, we're going to start going through this. And if you can kind of figure out the first one, then that's going to form the basis for everything else. So, this is, first off, when you look at this, this is a converging lens, okay? Otherwise known, now is this convex or concave? That's a con... Uh, Imagine eating cereal out of that thing. That'd be the most bizarre <laughs> experience I've ever had. Okay? Eating cereal out of this? You wouldn't be able to find the last, like, <laughs> like, like face around. Okay, imagine trying to shave out of it. Like, you just bloody yourself. I, I can like, like spy on people with this. Like hey, this looks like the mirrors they have in the like stores, oh, okay, you know? Oh, like 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 they like like in the back. No, but they're, but they're stealing. No, no, no. Those are con. Those, those are, are convex mirrors. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah, they look like, like this. Okay. Anyway, back to our story. Back to our story. Okay. So this is the simplest, but yet it forms the basis of so many things. So. Typically what you do when you draw your object, you don't want to draw your object as just a stick. And here's the reason why. If you just draw a stick, you don't know if the object is inverted or upright because it's a stick, no matter how you look at it. So typically when you look at the objects that you use in terms of your diagrams, a lot of times you'll see it drawn as a candle because that has like a nice top and bottom to it. You'll have like an arrow, okay, something like that. Uh, one class really got into carrots and they always wanted me to draw it as a carrot, okay? I don't care. Banana. Okay. Yeah, bananas are tough. Strawberry. <laughs> yeah. So let's just go with what I've got Apple. on here. Oh, I want I want carrots. Now, a lettuce slice. Here's the deal. Wait, so what is that so supposed to be? So Louie asked lettuce. about the axles. So if this was a flat piece of glass and this object and that light came through and it was a straight flat piece of glass, what would it do? It would just reflect back. No, no, no. If it was just a straight piece of glass, it would just keep going straight, right? Okay? It wouldn't bend. So what happens, Louie, is that when this beam of light hits this, it's going to get bent. And the more extreme it is, the more it gets bent. Now, the other thing that you'll see is that these are crafted on the idea that you're going from air into glass. That's what's going to happen. But if you submerge this, and this is what happens, what, what I did with like the test tube and the oil, mm -hmm. if I put this in the same, in, in, into a fluid, that had the same index of refraction as the lens did, it wouldn't make any difference. There would be no bending. So this only works because of the fact that this has a specific index of refraction, which is going to bend that light to a certain point. Now, so on here, I've told you that the object height is going to be two centimeters. Okay? So that's going to be the height of my rectangle. This center line here, this big center line, that's what we call the primary optical axis. And that's always going to exist no matter whether it's a lens, a mirror, doesn't make any difference. 
you always start with that primary optical axis that goes through the middle of the lens or the mirror. Now, you have focal lengths. So listen to me. Get this out of your minds right now. The focal length is not where the image is going to be. The focal length is based upon the type of lens that it is. Now, sometimes, sometimes, the image does appear where the focal length is, but that's just random, okay? So the focal length and where the image is are two completely different things. Louis. So like, is it kind of like a camera, I guess? Yeah, that's how, how the, cameras work. The lenses and everything? Exactly. How do they do it? What you're doing is you, kind of like what I did back there when I would, adju when I would adjust the, the object length distance uh -huh. or the image length distance, yeah. that would change the magnification. Oh, okay. Like send the lens forward or back? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So here's what you're going to do. Anytime you have a focal length, and so this is what I have on here. I've got a, I've got a focal length, and I tell you that that focal length is 20 centimeters, and I would have to give you that. It's like, hey, here's the lens that has its focal length of 20 centimeters. So you'll notice that you have three primary rays that are drawn here. You have one that goes parallel with that primary axis. It hits the lens, and then it goes through the focal length on the other side. Now, one ray does not tell you where the image is going to be. But it gives me an idea. As soon as I get this, I know that that image is either going to be here or it's going to be on this side. Okay? Those are the only two options that I have. Because this light's coming through, it's hitting this, and it's going through this focal length on the other side. So which means it's either going to be here and upright, or it's going to be here and inverted. Those are my only two options. Upright, inverted. Now, the second one is going to go through the center of that primary axis. Have a good weekend. We'll finish this up on Monday. And no, you don't have any homework. Keep going. Oh, please. Yes, I want to finish it.